The date is December 6, 2018, and it was a very eventful day. For example, George W. Bush honors his father. The Saudi lobby has spent $278,000. Canada arrests Huawei executive. North Korea news. French news. Michigan news. Global carbon emission news. Facebook news. Border Patrol news and the United States gymnastic team news. But for me, December 6, 2018 was especially eventful and important because it was the date that I started my YouTube channel and I posted my very first video, which was a review of the South Korean zombie film, Train to Busan. If you've never seen Train to Busan, I highly recommend it. It's very intense, full of action and drama, basically perfect for the pandemic that we're going through right now. And the reason I'm posting this video today is because I reached a YouTube milestone, which is I've surpassed 100 subscribers. I mean, I did think about making this celebratory video when I reached 10 subscribers, but that felt a bit boastful. And honestly, it was mostly just me subscribing to my own YouTube channels with all of my other Google accounts. But no, don't worry. I didn't create 121 YouTube accounts just so I can subscribe to this channel. And I'd like to thank everyone who has willingly subscribed. I couldn't have done it without you guys. And as the title of the video suggests, I'm going to explain to you exactly how to get 100 subscribers. I mean, I get it. It probably might have more weight if I had 100,000 subscribers or a million subscribers like this YouTuber guy doing his video on how to get your first 100 subscribers. But it just felt right to create this video in the moment, you know? And if you're still here with me, let's begin this overly presumptuous and highly tongue-in-cheek tips on how to get to your first 100 subscribers. Because let's face it, if I can do it, anyone can. The very first thing that you have to do when starting a YouTube channel is of course something very simple. It's that you have to find something that you're passionate about and that you love to talk about. Like I mentioned, I started off this channel to review movies and as you can see the first seven videos are of various movies or movie trailers that I have reviewed. But on the eighth video, I shifted my focus to more financial education. The reason why I changed was because I realized I didn't have time to go watch the newly released movies to review and in order to stay relevant and competitive in the movie review landscape, you have to upload the newest releases as soon as they come up. I found out that even though I enjoyed watching and talking about movies, I didn't really enjoy talking about movies, if that makes sense. Because whenever I was watching a movie, I found myself looking at the flaws in the movies, something to nitpick, rather than truly immersing myself and enjoying it. So it kind of ruined the movie watching experience for me, which I didn't like. So that's one of the reasons why I transitioned into a financial channel, because financial advice they're pretty much consistent and it's not really time sensitive or time related. It's going to be similar to one that was given 20 years ago or maybe 20 years into the future. So because of that, I found it more reassuring to talk about topics that I enjoy rather than having to be swayed by oh, what the newest releases is. Another benefit is, according to what I've read, I heard the CPM on financial channels are the highest among video topics. So I got that going for me. But in order to make money on YouTube, I need to reach the next milestone, which is 1,000 subscribers. So it's a bit far off, but you know, it keeps me motivated. All right, so after you pick the topic that you want to discuss, the next thing you need to do is to come up with a channel name and a thumbnail in order to get that great first impression. Because unless you're Will Smith, Kevin James, or Jack Black, you're going to need something to grab people's attention to get that initial click of curiosity. Even though my YouTube name is currently Financial Shenanigan, I first started off with just using my name, which was Daniel Shin. But do you know how many YouTube accounts exist of Daniel Shin? Quite a few, actually. This isn't me. This isn't me. This definitely isn't me. This isn't me. This one isn't me. Too young. No pictures. I don't play the violin. I do like pizza. So on and so forth. But if you search for Financial Shenanigans, there's no one. I mean, even YouTube's confused and it says, do you mean financial shenanigans? So if you're famous on other platforms or a celebrity, you can definitely use your name. But if you're a nobody like me who's just starting out, get creative with the name so when people see the name, it pings their interest. So they can click and figure out who you are and what your channel is all about. So after you pick the right topic and you come up with a catchy channel name and thumbnail, your next question might be, so how do you get clicks when people don't even know that you or your channel exists? Which leads me to the third most important tip that I can give you. It is to comment. Leave lots and lots of comments. 
And that's basically what I've done. Last year there was a couple of months where I didn't post any videos, but I still got a steady one or two subscribers every week or so. And the way that I did that was leaving comments on videos I was going to be watching anyway. And no, it doesn't mean leaving spammy comments like, hey, come check out my channel, or hey, I posted a similar video on my channel, check it out, or hey, let's subscribe to each other, none of that. You don't want to be known as that spammy guy who leaves comments just highlighting and trying to showcase your own channel. Now I'll show you examples of the type of comments I would leave, but basically I left comments that were pretty insightful, funny, serious, or unexpected to basically get the likes and engagement. And chances are people are going to read your comments and see that you're getting likes. And they might see your name and your thumbnail, so they might click on your face so they can find out what you're all about. They might end up watching a few videos. And who knows, they might end up liking and subscribing to your channel as well. Now to show you how effective a comment placement would be, let's go to this video. It's Graham Stephens, the upcoming stock market collapse of 2020. And if you scroll down, right at the very top is my comment. I basically wrote the stock market acting like someone who injected disinfectant, lol. And as you can see, I have 415 likes. Actually, let's make it 416 likes. Yes, I like my own comments, of course. That's basically how you get the ball rolling. But like I said, people are going to watch his video, scroll to the comment section, and they're going to see that my comment is getting a lot of engagements. They'll read my name. Oh, financial shenanigans. And out of the hundreds of people who read through the comments and click the like button, a few of them are going to be curious enough to click to my page. They're going to be able to see all the videos that you post. And if they're interested, they're going to watch it. And who knows, maybe they'll end up subscribing as well. And it's proof the video was posted on May 1st. And I left that comment on May 1st as well. And if you can see on my YouTube analytic page, I got 119 views on that day, which is way more than the other days combined. Which basically shows you a well-placed comment is going to be helpful in driving engagement to your own YouTube channel. So if you do have a YouTube channel and you're trying to get more subscribers or more engagement, just leave a comment on the videos that you're going to be watching anyway. And make sure to leave thoughtful comments and nothing spammy. So there you have it, the three tips that I followed in order to get to 100 subscribers. And I know these three tips aren't going to guarantee you to get more subscribers, but it's going to be a good start for you to spread awareness of your channel. And now even though you don't get monetized until you reach 1000 subscribers, there's one benefit when you end up having 100 subscribers, is you're able to get a custom YouTube channel URL. So if you scroll down, in order to be eligible, you have to have 100 or more subscribers, be at least 30 days old, have uploaded photo as a channel icon and have uploaded channel art, which is very easy. So if you go to my channel currently, right now the URL is all messed up. But if you type out YouTube slash C slash financial shenanigans and you hit enter, there you go, a custom URL. So when you're telling people to subscribe or you want to provide a link, you can put a link that is more specific instead of those randomized letters and numbers. So if you haven't reached 100 subscribers yet, or if you have already reached 100 subscribers, make sure you go claim your custom URL. So my next milestone will be naturally to reach 1000 subscribers and the 4000 hours required in order to start monetizing my channel. But regardless of how fast I reach that milestone, I'm going to keep on putting out videos that I find interesting and hopefully you find interesting that you're able to learn from. And like everyone says, it's a journey that counts. As always, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you'd like, subscribe to help the channel get to 200 subscribers on the way to 1000. 10,000, 100,000, and maybe even a million. I know 1 million subscribers is a daunting number, but I know that we'll get there one day. In any case, take care during this pandemic, stay healthy. As always, I'll be back with more shenanigans.